Sega, we need to talk. This week on Boss Battle. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Welcome everybody to Boss Battle number 150, a show in which the writers of InsertCoinToBegin.com get together and talk about video games. I'm your host, Bobby FJ Tom, but before we get to the infotainment and good time making of this podcast, let's see what everybody achieved this week. Chachi, how about you? What'd you achieve? Um, nothing. <laughs> okay. I did a review. I played zero video games. Uh, mine's going to be pretty similar to that. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I mean, I did the normal stuff. I checked on my cats. Um, I've yeah. given up on Crossy Road. I don't care anymore. Oh, oh, that's um, sad and disheartening. Yeah, well, you know. did, did did you get this? Did you get Psy at least? No. Oh no. But you can. I mean, you can only cross so many roads, Bobby. How many? You can only cross so many roads. How many roads must a man walk down before he can right. himself a man? Exactly. <laughs> and I got sick of walking down the road, so. Oh. Uh, yeah, no, the, I'm, I mean, normal stuff. I played Blobs from Sorg on Friday and the Lady. Um, mm-hmm. Sorg and the Lady on Friday. That's more than I did. I, pre- I prestiged. Yeah! That's always fun. Nice. I prestiged with Chachi and his Lady. Did yep. he go... Well, oh, that, no. that sounded no. real bad. <laughs> 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 you know, I want the new version of Blobs. I want a, yeah. I want a sound pack for Blobs too, where it's just Bobby doing that. We used to do that all the time, like for life situations. Like <laughs> you, you did something right. <laughs> like level up and stuff. It's fun times. That's how obsessed we were with uh, Modern Warfare too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Zork, what did you achieve this week? Uh, I said the blobs and I prestige. I, I think it's my second oh, prestige, right. yeah, of course. Yeah. But I spent a good amount of time with Bioshock Infinite. Um, oh, yeah, I got to the point where it got scary. <laughs> and um, and and especially with uh, these guys, the Silent Boys. Uh, oh, this feels like Bioshock now. Holy crap! Mm-hmm. <gasps> Holy crap! Um, yeah. To the point where, so I get, so I mean, everything is very wide open. You know, I mean, you're you're in your city in the clouds, and it's very bright, even when it's nighttime and everything. And then, and but you're not really scared. It's not as foreboding as the original Bioshock until you get mm-hmm. to the warden's office, and these guys pop up, and and they have the lights, and and if they spot you. Everything attacks. Spoiler, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you pull a lever, and one pops up behind you. And I'd been playing yeah. for a while, and I audibly yelled, <laughs> "Okay!" And uh, looked at the time. It's three o'clock. I'm like, "I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done." Which was I something. Can't wait till, that, go ahead. I can't wait till it becomes backwards compatible for Xbox One. <laughs> oh jeez. Like, I'll be playing the hell out of it again. It's and, one, one of my favorite games of all time. And you'll be able to uh, let's play it through the Xbox One services yeah, and yeah. DVRs. That that's the best part of that. I um, can do that anyways through. So that was the biggest thing. Uh, I, I don't have it hooked up anymore, but I have to do that. Infinite. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Injustice uh, on on the uh, iOS actually mm-hmm. ha- had a uh, special for Fourth of July with double XP. Double XP weekend. Uh, so uh, I was diving into that. Got my first gold character on that one. So I cool. uh, went from having like absolutely nothing to finally like feeling like I could get somewhere in the game. And I unlocked Dean Ambrose in the uh, special challenge that they had on uh, WWE nice. Immortals. So, nice. And I think I had the uh, super the superhero Daniel Bryan is next. And I'm at the point I can like get those if I put the work in on them. And it's cool. not like annoying to put the work in on them. Like I'm like, oh, cool. I'm playing and I'm doing something. So um, so I, it's, 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 I'm in a good spot with it. I'll play some Street Fighter, uh, Super Street Fighter Arcade. Uh, so. Yeah. That's that Holy shit. Hmm. What? Yes. Are you talking to me? Yeah, you're the one that said "Holy shit" and didn't mute yourself. Oh, yeah. If it's oh, not- sorry, I thought I was muted. Um, so <laughs> I, 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 we went to Palm Tuming this weekend, mm-hmm. and there it's not related to the show at all. But there we saw this dog that's a mix between a pug and a chihuahua, mm-hmm. and pug now wawa. we want one. Pug wawa. No, it's actually called a chug. Um, and I Either found one's one, great. I, I, wow. I found one that looks like Chewy. Oh. So I, right. that's why I said holy shit. I thought I was on mute. <laughs> I apologize. Continue with the show. All right. Well, now it's time to hit, learn what I did this week, mm-hmm. which is 
basically nothing. Oh, um, I checked. I checked my cats. Um, I'm addicted to Simpsons. Tapped out. Didn't get to play anything on um, uh, like console or anything like that. Uh, but this week there is a Microsoft sale, and Far Cry Four is twenty four dollars. I might get it finally. Oh no. Yeah. Um, There's a couple other games on there that, that are on sale that are pretty cheap too that I'm, I'm thinking about getting. Goat Simulator, six sixty nine. Uh, so. Will Will Will's been playing Far Cry, Far Cry Four uh, lately mm-hmm. as well, so you might want to touch base with him on that too. I talked to him about that. Yes, I was I was on the fence about it, but I think twenty four dollars is a reasonable and fair price. <laughs> All right, so Chachi, you want to take us around the net? Oh wait, 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 wait. we got something from the chat. Oh, okay. Oh. I didn't. I don't have the chat up. So sorry. Okay. Uh, this week, uh, um, uh, Matt, the brother Matt, played uh, uh, Borderlands and Minecraft, as well as a re- as well as rewatching of seasons one through nine of Red vs. Blue through the week. So easy to watch <laughs> through Netflix. So it's on Netflix, guys. If you haven't watched it That's yet, cool. definitely worthwhile. So uh, now, Chachi, I apologize. Now, Chachi, take us around the net. There's no time for a video game thing <laughs> from around the internet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry. I had I, I had so much energy put in the first one. You, you put your all into the first one. The second and one just was just a formality. Yep, the, the sword just uh, just shut me down. Mm-hmm. Sword, you ruined the fourth of everything. <laughs> what? Um, uh, all right, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, no. Uh, so this week, this week I came across uh, a few videos and uh, some stuff. Uh, user, uh, I don't know how to say it. Um, but uh, YouTube user and the name's over in the uh, the page. But uh, it created uh, Hyrule in Far Cry Four, um, and it looks incredible. It's Hyrule from uh, Ocarina of Time, um, and I mean, as far as like it goes, like the little differences because it's a different map pack. But I mean, it looks pretty much on. So go yeah, over. It, the only thing that I was missing was the the ring around the volcano. Right. I missed that. Um, so, uh, yeah, you can check it out. I have it over in the post. Uh, next up, uh, Twitch plays doing it again. Um, only this time they're doing it with Metal Gear Ghost Babble, uh, which is the, the Game Boy Color game. Oh, no. And they're failing not, miserably. <laughs> yeah, it's not going well at all. I, they were on, uh, this started over the weekend, or last week sometime. Uh, they were only two levels through, or through two levels in the game. Um, because for Pokemon, they'd be on level three. But. Oh, well, let's right. sh- let's check in with what they're doing now. We're loading the video, and uh, so the chat's going, and he's running in the corner. Um, okay, <laughs> um, he's just kind of sitting there, left. Okay, so this is like a top-down Metal Gear kind of game. Yeah, it's like it's around the time of the first Metal Gear Solid. It looks like, and uh, and uh, now the bad guy's coming up, and uh, now he's jumping. He's I think he just did a somersault. I, I'm not sure there. <laughs> At least they made it off the continue screen. Yeah. yeah. Oh, then, oh, really? Yeah, when I when I tuned in earlier this afternoon, they were stuck on the continue screen. <laughs> the bad guys are beating him down. <laughs> oh, so no. I mean, if there's actually action going on on the screen, uh-huh. then they've already made progress from when I saw them this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, all the bad guys found him. So, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> okay, they're so on a game over screen. Beep, 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 beep. Will they be able to get back? So many exclamation points! Yeah, it's it's amazing. Um, so yeah, you can check it out. It's linked. Uh, and last but not least, uh, Grand Theft Auto did it again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, someone created uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air uh, <laughs> intro using uh, Grand Theft Auto V. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and it's the extended version. And it's pretty damn good. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at this thing. I don't even have the music up. I don't even know how they got him to spin at the beginning of it. I, it's a, uh, a clipping. Okay. Um, it, it, it's essentially... Uh, the the PC version and it's set to be modded, so uh, you you have pretty much free reign in it. So, <laughs> wait, wait. so the basketball is just him with the basketball yeah. hat. <laughs> yeah. So I, I mean, uh, it's pretty pretty amazing um, and extremely well done as usual for you know, uh, Grand Theft Auto Five. 
And that's all I have for you this week on Video Game Theme Things from around the internet. No, 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 <laughs> wow. No, 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 no. Back to you, Bobby. All right. You guys remember a little game called Portal 2, right? Yeah. Portal 2. Yeah. Well, if you have the Steam version of Portal 2, do they have a surprise for you? Well, someone has a surprise for you. Uh, Portal Stories Mel is an unofficial prequel to Portal 2, made by, in, my, made by indie outfit Prism Studios. Uh, it's a fully voiced, awesome take on the franchise with the hardest puzzles the series has ever seen and outstanding production values as well. Uh, the game is free. However, it does require that you own Portal 2 on Steam in order to gain entry. Okay. Uh, the, the mod is set in the 1950s and stars an aperture tester named Mel. Uh, even an old school looking portal gun, so that that's kind of cool. Um, it has like a, a paperclip attached to the end, so that's kind of cool. Wait, uh, time out. Yes, it's in the fifties. It's set in the fifties. Yes. I, I'm gonna ask a question. Okay. Do you want to mm. guess what I'm gonna ask before I ask it? I'm not sure. Does it have Cave Johnson? Uh, yes, it does. It features Cave Don- Johnson narrating. Wait, did then, they get? You know and, and they actually didn't get him, but it's somebody that sounds a lot like. Oh, him. Oh, nice. Well, then I, uh, so, yeah, I, I own Portal Two for Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna buy it for PC. Okay. Wow. Just so I can. I think get I have it. I think I have it on Steam, even though my computer's a piece of crap. Just so I can get that mod. <laughs> oh, guess yeah, what? I'm dusting off, and it's worth it. Yeah. This is happening. Um, and they said the voice actors do a really, really good job. So. That's so awesome. yeah, get that get that if you have Portal Two on Steam. Oh, I will have Portal Two on Steam. <laughs> um, but what I want to ask from this: Are mods like this one a great way to give new life to an old classic, or would you rather have a new adventure from the studio itself? You know what? I, I this this brings me back to the days of and uh, in, in some of our, our were sold, but like things like like duking it out in DC. I'm, I'm playing lately on on Duke, the Duke Nukem pack. You can get uh, the big pack. You can get on Steam, right? Mm-hmm. But but like you know, again, others were sold. But but I remember. I don't know, Chachi, if you were we if you did this with me too. But we would grab just ra- the randomest uh, map packs. You could download yeah. and, and add to yeah. Duke Nukem, and and it is like a oh here's Duke Nukem, but it's on a football field. Right? Actually, I think that was a deathmatch level, so it's all meshing together. I can't remember what was real, you know, or there's Christmas versions or something like that, you know, or there's a there's a version that's just all strippers, you know, from the from the nightclub scene for whatever reason. I, I mean, it, I think it does add, and especially when you get something like this, where where the developers get to that quality level. Because mm-hmm. remember how how many times um, who was it? Is it the people that that did opposing forces or Gearbox? Gear, Gearbox was originally just modders mm-hmm. uh, or did mods or in add on packs and stuff like that. And uh, Team Fortress was an add on for Quake Two, maybe no I Quake so, One, yeah. maybe. Um, and and that they got hired by Valve, and now they do Team Fortress 2 and whatever other projects, right? And that talent, I'm sure, gets spread out. Not Team Fortress throughout. 3. Not Team Fortress 3, <laughs> just 2. We just stayed at the 2. Yet yep. it's so different now than it was 10 years ago. Amazingly different. And still fun to play, by the way. I popped in that mm-hmm. a couple weeks ago. But, um... Well, and they, they keep modding that game, too. I know, mm-hmm. I know. Well, that's like, the, the, they're, make, they're, they're evolving the game. It's not just a mod. Right. They they just keep well, updating. I mean, they they created a Splatoon mod last really? week for Team Fortress. Nice. Oh yeah, I did see that. Yeah. Uh, I tried to find. Well, I was going to put it in the the thing the theme things post, um, but I, I the Nintendo took the video down. Oh, jeez, <laughs> so, Nintendo. Boo, Nintendo. We just want to love you. <laughs> but yeah, no. If, if people want to keep doing this and the studio is okay with it, then I'll, by all means do it. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. I could play another three games worth of Portal Two stuff. Oh yeah. So I mean, it, it's completely worth it, and it's definitely fun. So look, look what Fallout Four is doing with uh, mods on Xbox. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, and we'll talk more about Fallout Four a little later. But yeah, and and, and like with some most games on Steam, it does add to it. Uh, like I know there were a lot of the the mod the modders and and. They, they they fixed a lot of the, the glitches that were going wrong with like certain games. Right. I think it was uh, City Skyscrapers or whatever Skylines. Mm-hmm. 
And I think they like fixed a lot of the things that were wrong with the game. Not saying that there was a lot wrong with the game because it was one of the best games of the year on PC. People have said, but you know, more power to them. Extend the life of the classics. So, all right. Speaking of downloadable content, <laughs> uh, Dragon Age Inquisition released a, a la- or released on last gen consoles, uh, as you guys know. Uh, but Bioware isn't supporting the PlayStation 3 or 360 versions with future DLC. Aww. Uh, if you played the game on the old console but plan on upgrading the latest model, you can continue your previous journey by bringing your save game over to a newer system thanks to a newly announced transfer feature. Okay, you ready for this? Mm-hmm. This is what you need to do. You need to own two copies of Dragon Age Inquisition, one on the old system, one on the new system. You can only transfer from old consoles to new, and within the same console family, <laughs> it needs to be PlayStation 3 to PlayStation 4 or Xbox 360 to Xbox One. You also need the Black Emporium DLC installed on both systems, which is free, by the way. Um, if you have any items uh, tied to an old save, like pre-order bonuses or anything like that, uh, that you have not bought or downloaded from the new system, they will not make the trans- transition, but the save will still transfer. If you bought a DLC pack like Jaws of Hakan, Hakan or whatever it is, Hakan, Hakan uh, you can re-download it on the new system at no charge. You can also transfer your multiplayer progress. You guys got all that? Mm-hmm. Uh, is this a, uh, what I want to know for this one? Is is this a sign of the end of the last gen systems, or in other words, is it time to upgrade? It's not a sign of the end of the last gen okay. because games are still coming out on this yeah. gen. It's just starting, man. Um, with Call of Duty coming out in November for for this gen, then I would hardly say that it's the end. Okay. Near the uh, end, they're getting. Yeah, the but end. yes, it's time to upgrade. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> so, I, I mean, while this gen is still going, it is time to upgrade to the new gen because more and more developers are going to stop going. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it's going to get to the point. We obviously, we're not getting a lot of new franchises or anything on the old gen, but it is going to be the mass Call of Duties and, and, and the ones yeah. where they, they will be sports making games. sports games. Like, like, they will be continue to make them until they can't match it, period, anymore. Um, they, didn't they announce uh, WWE 2K16 is going to be on last gen? Yeah, but do you remember what happened? Like, they were still releasing PlayStation 2 versions well mm. into the life cycle, and yeah. they didn't want to play them. And, and and so so if you're sitting there with a 360 and a PlayStation, and you see the announcements for the 2K games, don't get excited. Just don't. Yeah. It, it, really. <laughs> Um, I mean, yeah, we, we saw that last year. It was basically like a slight upgrade to the year before with uh, like some roster and stuff. And that, that's it. That's it. And 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 it's unfortunate. And and I think it's been so long because this has been the longest life cycle we've had ever. I ten think. plus years. Yeah, I mean, it's so I think people forget what happened ten years ago when we went from PS2 to PS3 and Xbox to Xbox 360. Mm-hmm. So. Um, but 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 you but also history proves Sony will support that PlayStation Three forever. Um, forever. Like I, the PS One, I think was still available when the PS Three came out. Yeah, didn't they make it like its own little console with like, and they even released a small screen for it, so you can like almost make it a handheld system. Yeah, yeah, they did all kinds of stuff like that. But, but yeah. you got to think that's still there's no reason if you're a parent with a kid on a budget uh, to get a 360 and be able to like, oh, I got you this $20 game where I can buy all the games of five below, you know? I mean, that's, mm-hmm. and they're fine games. I'm having, I don't feel like I'm left behind playing 360 games. Like I might yeah. have going from PlayStation to PlayStation 3, you know? I, mm-hmm. I mean, you saw the, well, that's way better. I, I, I'm still, still yet to really see the reasons for Xbox One. But it's getting easier to make that decision mm-hmm. little by little. and Based uh, on what's coming on the pike. Yeah, based on just like new properties coming out. Like it's going to be just, I'm not getting it because that's the system that can do more things. I'm getting it because that's a system that has the game I can't get anymore on this old system. So that's what I think. Just like Chachi. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't get Assassin's Creed on 360. So I'm not good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so which I think, I don't know. I think it's going to be a harder sell. Other than that, you got to have the really good games coming out. But. Oh shit! Upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> That's my thing from Idiocracy. My favorite line. 
<laughs> All right. Um, speaking of upgrading, you guys remember what happened at E3, right? A bunch of games were shown off. Still a haze. Still a haze. T- today, they announced the winners of Best in Show and a couple other categories. Took them long enough. Fallout 4 took home the Best of Show at E3. Uh, the winners, the other winners were announced today. Uh, the nominated games had to be playable to E3 to get a nomination. Hmm. Uh, here are some of the other winners. Uh, best original game was Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, that really awesome uh, Sony game that was shown off of the uh, computer dinosaurs. Uh, best console game was Uncharted 4 at Thieves' End. A Thief's End. Uh, best handheld game was Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes. Best PC game, again, went to Fallout 4. Best hardware went to the Oculus Touch. Uh, best action game was Star Wars Battlefront, which I'm excited about. Uh, best action adventure game, Uncharted 4 again, took that one. Best RPG, Fallout 4. Best racing game, Need for Speed. Best sports game, FIFA 16. Best family social game, Super Mario Maker, which looks he- uh, hella fun. Uh, uh, oh, hello. <laughs> uh, best online multiplayer, Star Wars Battlefront once again. Uh, best independent game, No Man's Sky. And a special commendation for graphics. <laughs> Uncharted 4 at Thief's End. Um, are you surprised that Fallout 4 won Big E3? I'm not surprised. It had the most buzz, didn't it? Mm-hmm. I think so. Even even that little teaser they released before E3, and I think they even released the trailer before E3, it still was like one of the best games shown at E3. If, well, it was the best game, evidently, shown at E3. Okay. Okay. Uh, with our video games, we enjoy pizza, right, Sorg? Yes, we do. Slice on Broadway at SliceOnBroadway.com. Check them out. They're supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with Pizza. We had a group in here for Awesome Cast. Um, and, uh, you know, they're joining us here during their dinner hour. And it, it's good to be able to, you know, still uh, be munching here and not have to sneak a fast food or something. We got some good quality stuff from these guys. They're in the South Hills of Pittsburgh if you happen to be in the area. Along the tracks in Beachview over downtown in Carnegie, PA. And uh, let them know. They're on the social media. Let them know that uh, you heard about them on the boss battle. Uh, wherever you may be, uh, PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter, as well as Slice on Broadway on the Facebook and the Instagrams. And uh, and thank them for supporting the shows. So with that, Bobby, uh, let's take a quick look at what happened last week across the podcast of Sorgatron Media. Um, I think Sawtooth have an intoy in the Pittsburgh Underground. Sorgatron here. Since you ain't come down to visit, since you ain't gonna snort no cat dander with Sawtooth, Sawtooth needs assistance in other ways. This is my first Gateway 2000. Wow. 3Fix 33DX. Um, I had the math coprocessor. But if you go to analytics.pinterest.com, log into your account, you can see this amazing dashboard. It, it kind of reminds me a bit of uh, what you get for insight on pages. What's happening is Red Bull is teaming up with, with Activision for Destiny, creating a, a DLC for the game. Uh, does, so, it, does it give you wings? No. Actually, it might. Who Last knows? night I went to Dependable Drive-In, which is a place that I've heard about probably for about a decade at this point, and for whatever reason, just never made it to. But yeah, air sex is the greatest sporting spectacle in the world. So it, it started off as like a small idea, uh, you know, like a parody of an air guitar show, and it just grew from there. It just snowballed. It was... Because we saw an opportunity to grow a project, we were like, let's ride this thing and see how it goes. Oh uh, no, my camera has the uh, the follow my face feature, and even though I'm sitting <laughs> still, it thinks I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it just did it! <laughs> I'll fix this manually, Sorky. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it didn't follow your face Ooh, that time. There we go. <laughs> All right. It's a wrestling there mayhem show that? where we what don't understand uh, technology here. Uh, Chachi Plays for Kids is coming back again. The 24-hour Gameathon for Youth Arts Programs in Pittsburgh. August 7th and 8th at the Tunesium or join us live. ChachiPlays.com. Find out how you can make a difference to and donate today. ChachiPlays.com. Up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, BA, start. Yeah. Wow, we did so much last week. Uh, Get some time to check that out, guys. 
All right. When Sega acquired Atlas in 2013, there were fears that the publisher would be transformed by the company. Mm -hmm. Uh, Through nearly two years of releases and unwavering uh, commitment to loyal fans, those concerns have largely been abated. What few, if any, foresaw was that Atlas wouldn't just thrive under Sega, but it would play a role in reforming the Sonic publisher's business, which is a good thing. Uh, According to uh, Siliconera, uh, translation of a recent interview with Famitsu, uh, Sega has n- watched how Atlas operates and will be incorporating successful practices into its own business. Um, as far as the Western market goes, we learned a lot from Atlas, says Sega president and CEO Hajime Satomi. Uh, if we can make a title with proper quality, I believe there's a good chance for it to do well, even in the West, for some players that like to play Japanese games. As Tommy also says that he recognizes over the last decade, Sega has partially betrayed the trust of longtime fans. Uh, Sega may have something to announce at Tokyo Game Show this year, but Satomi recognizes that its shift to greater quality and its efforts to make uh, amends to fans will be uh, a longer endeavor. So the final round question this week is, can Sega redeem themselves in the eyes of gamers, or is it too little too late? What are your thoughts? It's not too late. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's too late, I, I, but, but they, they need to really kick ass, and they don't have the momentum. And A, this restructuring, until you see a, you know, until I see a game that, that proves me, it makes me forget how much Sonic has been abused over the last few years. Like the Sonic, <laughs> you know how good a Sonic game has to be for yeah. us to buy into it at this point? It can't yeah, just be a good Sonic game. It has to be like the the Assassin's Creed of Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> in order for us to care. I don't think they have to go better than that. No, no, I'm saying no, no, no. I'm saying they need to. You no, know, you say they need, they need to get better than that. Yeah. Okay. It has to be the Skyrim of Sonic games. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right. I just think Sonic. I, I mean, they're gonna. They lost a lot of loyal fans. I know. But you know, hey, it's like you said; it's it's never too late. But it's gonna take a lot. This is the thing that D- Nintendo is in danger of: is mm-hmm. that kind of brand falling yeah. out. But the thing, regardless of what we think about Nintendo, and really, I think, I think, if nothing else, because they're, we wouldn't think Nintendo was so bad if they weren't supporting their own console. I think the games are good. The games they mm-hmm. do put out are good. Very good are great quality. They're never a slouch for that quality. So Sega dropped the ball on quality. And and look what it did, you know. So open I, world, crazy taxi. That's what they need to do. <laughs> and do more than wasn't just slapping wasn't Sonic. Crazy in there. Taxi already pretty much open world? Kind of but not really. <laughs> Sort of. Grand Theft Auto style crazy taxi. <laughs> so you more Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, pretty much just taxi. Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. <laughs> With more taxis thrown. <laughs> they can't do that. I know they can't do that. Um hey guys. Um so here's here's the thing. Never a big fan of Sega. Mm-hmm. I was never a big fan of Sega. So so um, so Sega didn't do what Nintendo what Nintendo don't? Right. Um, you know what? Sega should just create another Knuckles and then call it a day. <laughs> okay. Knuckles RPG. What? <laughs> there. I just I just right. did the job for you, Sega. Come on. I just like, did the job for you. After a Mega Man RPG? Come on. <laughs> Mega Man Legends. Only with Sega. Yeah. There you go. Sega, Sega characters. Yeah, Knuckles, Knuckles RPG. That was almost Ooh, that's almost Sonic Adventure, actually. But uh, yeah, well, it I, would be it would be kind of fun to do it like a Sonic RPG. I don't think they've ever done that, have they? Uh, kind of make it like Mario RPG a little bit. Like yeah, yeah. I, I, I think they would. You know, honestly, honestly, Sega, sell your IP to Nintendo and let them have mm. it. Seriously. Yep. They, they, he's Seriously. already appearing in, in Nintendo games. Yeah, because that's the only way you can get a good Sonic game is when he appears in Mario's. Five more Sonic and Mario with these summer games. Yes. <laughs> Your yes. Olympic games. There was one announced. Uh, so, yeah. 
All right, is that all everybody has? That's it. Yep. That's it. All right. That's going to do it for us this week. You can follow us on Twitter at InsertCoinTV. Uh, you can visit us at InsertCoinToBegin.com. New articles going up daily. And you can join us live every Tuesday night live! at 8 o'clock on live.sorgatronmedia.com. Live! Join the party. It's a podcast party. We have pizza. We'll fax it to you. It's going on. Raise the roof, Josh. Oh yeah, is that magic fingers? Was, is that what you're doing was, over there? I was, I was doing the uh, the uh, transition from. I was concerned that somebody hurt themselves. <laughs> all right, so you want to plug some stuff? <sighs> plug all the things, ChashiPlease.com, But I'll let him do that thing. Of course, Podcast mm-hmm. Pittsburgh coming up. If you are in the area, they'll be streaming as well uh, for that event. And uh, just uh, let's see, none of that, none of that. Power Hour. Go to check out the Power Hour at Sorgatron.com. Uh, myself talking with a great LB, Will, uh, and check out his panel, riot.com as well for a great comic book podcast. I think you guys are going to dig it. And check out all that stuff. You check that on this week in Sorgatron Media as well. Bobby? All right, Chachi Plugs. ChachiPlugs.com! Help us mm. help kids. Help the kids. Please. Hit that help donut the kids. button. Yeah. It's you for go the over kids. ChachiPlugs.com, hit that donate button. $50 gets you an hour with me playing the game that you want to play. Hint, I don't like NASCAR and I don't like soccer. <laughs> um, so there you go. At 3 in the morning. Yeah, at 3 <laughs> in the morning. Um, I can't at 4 a.m., we're playing golf. So, I can't wait. You know, we golf outing with the superhero masks and and, yep. and also realizing this week when we're filming something down there, the Avengers exhibit is going to be going on at the same time. Yes. Yes. So we have to do our best to not include the Avengers in our golf game because I'm pretty sure they'll frown on that. I'm, I'm not saying. I'm just saying I might try to come for the entire 24 hours. Oh. We'll, we'll do see. it, Bobby. Bobby, on it. somebody should uh, – you should campaign for people to sponsor you – Getting in a car and getting there <laughs> for 24 hours for the kids. Hit that donate button to get, get me in the car. Bobby, like a, like a, have a little like thermometer that has like a car. We can call it. Set. We can call it. Bobby makes an appearance for kids. Uh, my, That's what I'm gonna donate, plug this donate. week. That's what I'm gonna plug this week. Get in my car. All right, at Bobby FJ Town, you can follow me there. Uh, and that's gonna do it for us this week, guys. Game over. Game This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.